How does one prepare and consume crumpet? Now I know some of you like those newfangled crumpets, like the square one, and those rectangular ones that tear in half, but not for this little bunny. I like the plain ordinary round one. First one stokes and fans the embers of the fire into the firebox till they're a soft glowing red cherry red. If you're lucky and have an open fire which will be very warm and inviting as well as comforting, first you get your pronged toasting fork, bravely step forward and pale your chosen crumpet on the tongs, front side first, first warm it through to a golden brown, hold it to the fire warming it to an excited golden brown on both sides, make sure one has fire gloves on as you do not want to toast your fingers as well. Then with the fire gloves gently prise the crumpet off the tongs then lay it face up on a warm pellet. While still piping hot apply liberal quantities of salted butter. None of this homogenized margarine or this newfangled soft butter just plain straight out butter for me. Now I know some of you like your jams like strawberry and plum and the oh and all these exotic gems. No, not for this bunny. While it's still piping hot, I apply liberal quantities of honey. And have it running into every crack, running into every crack and crevice. Now I know some of you like your yellow box, black box, grey box, and even some of the wild bush honey. Well, myself, I I like the plain old eucalyptus camelodonensis. River red gum honey for me. Then while still piping hot, tear open and consume well with dripping honey. Now I know there are a few there are a few bewildering array of kinds of honey available in Australia. Some of them are quite exotic. So today I thought I would taste test them for you. My father liked the more exotic uh, leatherwood honey. Coming from overseas, you know, yes. Uh, that place called, uh, what's it called? Uh, oh yes, Tasmania. The flower, the flavour is much like the place that requires taste. I'm not sure if it, it's the extreme fresh air blowing across the ocean from the west. If there is, of course, a slight salty taste of a possible whale, seal, dolphin, or even a hint of penguin floating off the top of the waves, cresting on the wind. That may well be the reason for the exotic flavour of the leatherwood. Well, back to our taste testing of our chosen honeys. Now, those exotic flavours are not just, not for this little bunny. No, none of your wild spicy wild bush honey. No, this little bunny just likes his ordinary plain honey for me. So first, we will be tasting Yellow box honey. Wild box honey is the air of mystery, the feel of the grey blue foliage rustling in the warm inviting breeze. The air is filled with a light wafting of perfume and the slight mysterious exotic aftertaste rolls off the palate like a good wine. Oh. Next up we have the black box honey. The balmy heat pulses through the grey blue, grey blue foliage, caressing the black tongue, trunk as this truly memorable scent. Oh, oh yes! I feel the deep rhythmic exotic flavours that ascend on the palate, quickening one's very heartbeat with strong passions like one can only get from a good mature wine. Oh. Good mature wine, yes, yes. Oh, it's lingering with me. Uh, yes. Now we will be taste testing wild bush honey. Yes, that's right, wild bush honey. Oh dear, God, one way to carry it away to misty covered mountains or exotic hot pulsing desert of the never never. Oh, you know, uh, you like your honey wild and spicy, adventurous? Well, this is the one for you. There's a hint of the chill hush stillness of the misty covered mountains, the warmth of the open bushlands, the feel of the exotic deserts of the never never. 
the flavours linger gently like an exotic perfume on the palate. This is an experience not to be taken lightly, but to be truly remembered. Next. Next. I said next. I said next. Yes, that's right. Red gum honey. We will be tasting, we will be tasting the true honey. His namesake stands above all of the rest like a beacon in time. One is immediately way, carried away to distant places where the gently flowing rivers lately pass through the majestic trees that stand as sentinels in time, warming the scented, scented breezes. This with one honey one will always come back to with familiar flavours and a comforting and reassuring on the palate. Yes, yes, more please! Uh, yeah. Finally, we have the leatherwood honey. Yes, the leatherwood honey. Oh, yes, it's still linger on that one. Oh, the mountain honey. Oh, yes. Uh, this indeed is an exotic honey. We're still taste testing today. Well, it comes first. It comes from overseas. Yes, that's right. Yes, that's right. Overseas. Yes, it comes from that island called uh, what's it called? Oh, yes. Tasmania, a strange island to the south of the Australian mainland, a place where it constantly rains. In the valleys, the trees are covered with mosses and ferns, dripping with water, which is, can, which, can, can, which is truly an acquired taste. In these places grows a mystical, magical leatherwood, buffered by the westerlies blowing all the way from the south to South America. Wafting on this breeze is the exotic bouquet of whale, seal, dolphin and penguin. This all adds to the distinctive bouquet of this honey, with its truly exotic flavours that are carried in on the sea breezes. A memorable experience with a truly challenging and an acquired aftertaste. If you, you will never forget. I certainly never will.